It is Friday. Thank goodness. It is definitely Friday. I seen the picture of that yesterday. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Hot as it is, it ought to sell good. <laughs> my kids want it. They, uh, which, so far, uh, they're gonna get it. But we're not. We're not letting one have it till we got three. Yeah. Uh, with three kids, they would fight over it instantly. So, um, which is crazy. I, I get it though. Um, so we. We're gonna hold off and we're gonna wait till I get two more in uh, or get enough for them, but <laughs> <clears throat> you know, it's one of those things. I'm so. proud you got these out. I've seen a picture of them and finally, I was just wondering. Finally got them in. That's the new tool of the week. Uh, I always try to find something to talk about <clears throat> earlier in the week. And uh, those come in last night, so good timing huh so everybody this is our first stop of the day so everybody on your channel will actually get to see it before any of my customers get to see it so that's okay too but so this one we <clears throat> we did we share pictures of these at uh expo we may have shared either one um my media person does that so i don't know but uh, Your media team. Huh? That's it. <laughs> she does all the media, so she does really good at it. I probably would forget to do it. So, but we showed a picture of the guy using the air hammer to break it loose and stuff. Um, I like it for multiple reasons. One fact that I like it for is on some of the strut bolts and stuff like that, uh, you can't get an impact in a long mm -hmm. deep socket in there, so you got a short socket. We've all had that instance where it's been so tight with pressure that when you go to back it out. You kind of get in a bind and the, the bolt don't want to go back through so you have to run it forward which of course you've already got the nut off so it's no big deal but you run it forward to get your socket off yeah. to then take a hammer and a punch and, and take it out this right here will allow you to break it loose and then basically do the same thing but if you want to you can spin that that nut off with a wrench or anything at that point and you're not getting your impact stuck but also just a great way to, to break them loose the only thing that i um am going to tell my customers um let's not ever do it like that right there yeah. anytime you take a tool that has a pivot point like this uh even max with a hammer and you max it out it's not so much the pin because the pin's taking abuse any way you move it but then you're going to start eating your uh socket and the the shaft here up right here and it's going to get real sharp real quick uh and it just it just if you like your tools to look nice and fancy it's definitely going to um, not look like that when you max them out right. um, we have our uh, fan clutch tool the new one that we come out with that um, is basically the same way it has a pivot point on it mm -hmm. it's a really great tool but even on it if you max that out you're going to mess it up pretty quick so just don't do that so what all sizes comes in that kit we got a 14 a 17 a 19 a 21 and a 22 um i'm just gonna be honest with you i don't know what 14 is gonna be that that tight unless maybe i don't even i don't even know because i think exhaust is 12 so um I, i'm not real sure on the 14. the 17 19 21 22 i can see definitely um uh as far as your alignment and stuff like that your alignment bolts and nuts and stuff you know struts control arms stuff like that these are really going to come in handy um there may even be some other uh, areas that you run into that you're like, hey, this is just stupid tight. I wonder if I can break it loose. Um, and you'll have this. Now, I've actually got two sets on here um, that are different. This one's air hammer. I didn't even know people didn't like using air hammers, but some people don't. So if you don't like using air hammers, this is the manual set here. Same sizes, but they're actually not for your impact oh yeah they're, they're hit with a regular hammer so so that you don't uh so that you don't have to buy these you have this option here uh, and they come with this little instruction manual here i'm guessing because this is rubber that when you put this on there which is what you're it's made to do i'm guessing that's just to help if you Keep miss you your hand, you, yeah. yeah you don't hit your hand so you're still gonna have to aim and, and you know hit this little bitty dial here, but 
um, at least if you do hit your hand, unless you've got terrible aim, and at that point you're probably going to break your wrist, but hit, miss this way. <laughs> so if you do, you're going you're gonna to have a little bit of protection there. So that's always a good thing as well. And it does have uh, a couple replacement pins, so if something happens or something like that, you, you have them there. But Well, that's cool. I think I would go with the air hammer version myself. I would de most definitely go with the air hammer. Um, heck, I, if I could get my air hammer on it and I had a tool on that would go onto the air hammer and make it easier, that's the tool that uh, I would go with. When the uh, Texas Twister come out, I thought that was the coolest thing ever mm -hmm. because um, right at the end of me being in a shop was when we were pulling a lot of motors to rebuild them and we had to take the axle out. You didn't have to, but if you didn't, when you pulled the motor out, it would put it at a pretty severe um, angle and a lot of times it was tearing the boots. So we made it a rule in the shop that you had to pull the axle out. Well, that's all great and well, except for these did not want to come out. Like you were taking pry bars and mm -hmm. having two people, you were taking an air hammer anyway with a punch and, and, and trying to use the vibration on the actual carrier there to loosen it up so you could pry it out. Man, that Texas Twister would have just pulled it right out and we wouldn't have to worry about it. But if I could get some, it would be these here. Um, they do make these a little longer since you are going to have to hit it with a hammer. You're going to need more room. Right. Whereas this one here, you're going to have the air hammer that's going to do all the work break it right loose and not have to worry about it. So a good strong air hammer with these right here would be the way to go, um, which we have. I, don't, I was just looking to see if I had one on stock, but I don't. We have a really good air hammer, Mako does. So if you want these and don't have an air hammer, you got the you got the set that you can get as well. Somebody was asking about your extractors. What kind of extractors does Mako uh, as far as male or female, we got a couple of different. We talked about the screw extractors um, here a while ago. We showed them on camera. We also have uh, this set here. And Are they like a turbo style? That's what everybody is. Um, I had actually never seen the turbo style, but everybody comes on and asks for turbo sockets, and this is mm -hmm. what they pick up and say, oh, right here they are. So I'm guessing. Right. Um, I think turbo is. Um, snap on name for it i think um or that's what they generate turbo with um, but normally this is what they come to which we do have um the deeper ones as well this is a 3 8 kit um the part number on the 3 8 long here is is right there and then the part number on these is right here and it, these used to come in a set. So if, you, if you're if you sitting there looking at yours and you had a, a red case and you're thinking, well, crap, I'm, maybe those are better. These are the same ones that were in the red case. They just changed up the design. They put the little uh, clip here to hold the punch out tool. All of them come out with a punch out tool. This one here looks like it's vibrated out. So it's probably down in there. We also have them. Um, we got several different styles. This one here is actually labeled uh, as a TS s 5a have a lot of people that use these on the lug nut sockets mm -hmm. we do have some that are made just for your lug nut sockets but we have a lot of people buy those uh, let me see if i can find any of the other ones uh the light's gonna blind me but we do have we have quarter inch as well uh, that's actually short three eighths that's just a shorter set of the other one. Um, so yeah, we, we've got several different styles. We do have the, uh, let me look in this drawer and see if I got them. We have these uh, straight. straight. So if you've got a, a bolt or something uh, broke off in a, in a head or something, you can drill and of course, hopefully it ain't that big of one, but you have those there. Um, Mako does have a set that has left-handed drill bits with some straights in there so that may be something you want to look at of course this is where all of our drill bits are located um and i'm probably missing a few to be honest we we have so many different styles that we carry uh, just really ask your macro guy tell him what you're doing and let him right. pair it up with the best um, idea that you might need 
and I always suggest um, pulling up the catalog and, and looking through it as well mm -hmm. online because you know exactly what, what can fit where. Um, those screw extractors that we showed a couple of weeks ago, uh, they're a lot shorter, so therefore they will actually get in a better spot than those straight ones that we just looked at here. Right. Uh, I saw yesterday, speaking of extractors, somebody that was actually using a regular T bit and they drilled a hole and put it in there and apparently a lot of people's doing that. I've never seen that. But they said that to drill it in the center and drive it down in there and take it out. Well, if it works, it works, right? Well, you know, with extracting or um, rethreading or any of that, I know we've showed the rethreaders a couple times and stuff like that. When you're in that position, you don't care if it's designed for it or not. You're <laughs> having a bad day. Yeah. You're having a bad day. So uh, is this made for this? Nope. Yeah. Would I be mad if somebody said, hey, I broke this off trying to extract a bolt. I don't care. Um, some people might. That's, you know, uh, it's on you. But, uh, hey, if you told me this extracted a bolt, then guess what? And we've all been there where you've, you know. We've all been there where well, we. We had a truck drain plug. It was stuck one time. It had a hex, a big hex head on it. We actually put a hex in there and welded it. And yeah. Put the wrench on it, or the socket on it, or ratchet on it, and got it out. Yeah. Well, I've seen a bunch of people weld, uh, and when you when you can get to that with a welder, or it, it's okay to do that. That's fine. But um, you know, I've seen like in some of these heads and stuff, um, they've tried to weld and, and then not work, of course, because uh, the heads are aluminum and stuff. But there's certain areas that don't need to get super hot. It yeah. can cause issues. So. Um, with that, you know, we've got different extractors there. We uh, evidently we got them in this and just didn't know it. A um, lot of good, a lot of good extractors on the market. But something else, we've all seen rubber wheels. Um, these come in this week oh, too. Yeah, those eraser wheels. Yeah, we've all seen eraser wheels. Well, they've decided to throw in a little adapter here, and we are actually using them to clean inside the rim where the wheel weights are. Mm -hmm. I'm actually mad that I didn't think about that when I was doing tires <laughs> because we had a plastic scraper. I'm sure I've got one somewhere on here. And we would use that stupid scraper to try to get all that just old glue and gunk and everything else and watch the video on that. And that took it off in just a matter of seconds. And that would have saved my fingers and a lot of pocket knives that I lost in the time. But, <laughs> You know, on, on steel rims, it don't matter so much, but some of these new aluminum wheels and stuff, even the, the other ones that are painted, yeah. um, these right here would save the paint. And I'm the type of person to wear, um, that's why I mostly do all my work on my stuff, but don't scratch my rims on the inside either. Like I know it's on the inside, but they're all getting them wider spokes now yeah, so that you, you can, can see. see and uh, something that I used to do is I would try to align the weights uh, the best that I could behind the spokes. Um, of course, it would still be in the back, so if you looked um, close enough, you could see it. But I would never leave the old. I, I can't tell you how many times somebody come in and there was just a bunch of old glue everywhere on the back of it. Well, I don't like that either, so right. uh, I'd have to take all of it off just for my OCD. But that right there, I like the fact that it comes with an adapter. I can't tell you how many times I've walked in shops and I've done it myself. You buy the, it's more of a cream colored one. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's got the same true style. You don't have that type. So you just chuck it in a drill and go. Yep. Well, of course it ruins the threads right away, but also sometimes it starts to spin. Mm -hmm. um, so that adapter is a big, big thing for it. So you know, we actually that. looked for an adapter. Yeah. When I was doing that, we ended up, I ended up getting one, just getting it made. Yeah. A buddy of mine welded nuts and stuff and made an adapter yeah well and i've seen people they uh they have drills and stuff that uh they just lucky enough take the padding off uh, like surface press tools and stuff they'll take that off and these fit right on it well that's great but on these bigger trucks um i have a big truck company that t takes their big logos off with it mm -hmm. um you'll, you'll burn a surface prep tool up in a heartbeat with a rubber wheel and a big sticker. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you're talking about even a two foot by two foot sticker, it's which is not that it. not that yeah. big when you're talking about putting it on the front of a truck. Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna wear one of these out quick, but one of the other ones, they, they were a little bigger. Um, you'd, you'd burn a surface tool up quick, mm -hmm. but you put that adapter on there, uh, chuck it in an air drill or something, 
and you're ready to go. There you go. Of course, we're all going to try to use a cordless because we don't like air, so that's that's the way we're going to go. But that's you know. true. All right, guys. Well, next Saturday's the meetup, and Metco Michael's going to be here, and he's going to have his truck and lots of goodies and maybe some super special deals for you guys. Who knows? Like always, thanks for watching the video. If you like it, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Check over for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes is down there. If you're not subscribed, click that button. You guys have a great week. See ya.